Hello everybody and welcome back to Carms and Farm. I've just spotted a deer in the neighbour's front garden. And my dog is on the road. Uh, we should probably sort this out. Dog, come here. Stop messing around. Um, oh, I scared a deer. Oh. Come on. Okay. <laughs> it's uh, stopping anybody from passing. So anyway, yeah, yesterday we had that big problem uh, with the audio. I was recording my video normally then discovered that the Windows update had disabled the microphone without me knowing. So I had to time up the video and I was doing Poplar. Hello, it skidded to a halt. Wow. Uh, yes, anyway, you come over here. Yes, yeah, so we're going to continue with the Poplar. Our dog has returned. You stay there. Uh, right, anyway, so if we just tab back over here, you can see I was doing uh, quite a bit in the previous episode. I was actually explaining things as I went as well in the previous episode and uh, yes I made a point of saying that I was intentionally leaving quite a big gap between them just to make it easy as I may well be doing some poplar bales. I don't know yet. Uh, we might use the forager. I still have to decide and um, yeah I think we can get the poplar baler. I think we can. I will need to check that. But anyway yes I was also getting this cultivator going. It's done all of this area but there is still a piece over here to do and uh, well it was a bit of a, a tricky decision um, because of it being November I thought it'd be a good idea just to get it cultivated so that we could potentially plant some means of here instead of doing subsoiling if we subsoil we'd have to do the stone picking which would have cost us more money with the stone picker and uh, yeah I think I'm just gonna get a crop put in in the spring and then after that crop has been harvested we'll then do the stone picking we've just done so much stone picking recently. So first of all today, I'm gonna to finish off the cultivating. There really isn't much to do. You can see where I've cultivated up to. That is basically a guideline for where the poplars are gonna be going to. We have 50% of a crate left, 50% of a poplar crate, and that tends to do four rows in this particular field. Um, it, it, a full crate is eight rows, which I think is just amazing. <laughs> Uh, the fact that you can get that many cuttings, poplar cuttings or poplar saplings, into a crate is just mind-blowing. Um, so yeah, two, just two crates has uh, been enough to do it. But we do have three crates. I bought three just in case. Um, I think once we've done the first poplar harvest, I will put the third crate in. Uh, it just at the moment, I just don't know how long it's going to take to harvest what we have. It might take a while. I really don't know. So we're just going to see. Just going to put two in for now. Uh, but yeah, looking good here. The John Deere tractor is doing a good job. It's perfect, I think. I think it is the perfect size tractor for this particular cultivator. When it was going up the hillside over there in the previous video, it pulled the engine RPM down a bit, but it, it was fine. So we're going to keep hold of the Massey Ferguson tractor and then I think we'll eventually replace either the John Deere or the fence, probably the fence because that is smaller and it is going to be handy to have another bigger tractor. But I think it might be a nice idea to go for a bigger but older tractor, it would be cheaper as well. It might be an addition to, I haven't yet decided, but I have seen some pretty good mods come up recently on ModHub. So it would be very tempting to uh, to go for one of those. Anyway, yeah, let me just get this done. And then we'll move back onto the poplar. I think in the future it would be a good idea to actually replace this cultivator with the 9 meter subsoiler. I just had a brainwave, I thought why, why would I keep using this, although it's a really good cultivator for this tractor as I was saying. There's not really much point in having it because the 9 meter subsoiler is wider. I would say it's actually possibly faster or maybe the same speed 
and you get the periodic ploughing bonus. Well, I won't chase the deer, just slow down a bit. Yeah, I think the deer look absolutely fantastic. It's only when they run through a wall, which is uh, a little bit weird looking. Uh, that's nothing to do with the map, by the way. Yeah, so good to have wildlife. If even more wildlife can be added, great. The more the better, in my opinion. And that, that was actually pretty realistic, the way it was actually following the road. Amazing. Yeah, so we probably will replace the cultivator with the subsoiler, eventually. I do also need to start cleaning my tractors. I think we'll do an end of season wash. Uh, no point doing it while we're still using them. Okay, so we're just going to put this in the main yard up here. And then we're going to well, have to go back to the, uh, the poplar field with the quad bike. I don't really know if I should set a rule of no tabbing. I, I like the idea of it, but at the same time it might get a bit painful. I don't know. Uh, in fact, that could be a vote for today's video. Should I enforce a no tabbing rule? Okay, right, let me just put this into here. Luckily, we are going straight back in the shed. There's no turning around the corner to do. Brilliant, I'm going to keep this tractor attached and we need to go and find the quad bike, which I think I tucked around here. Yes, it's a good place to keep it. Okay. Right, so, yeah, 50% of a crate, which would be basically four rows, which should cover all of the non-cultivated area, and then leave the field, leave the field for the winter, because the rest of it can be drilled in the spring. I'm not too sure yet what I'm going to put in. Well, I say drilled, I probably mean planted. Um, it might be a good opportunity to do potatoes or sugar beets or something. And yet, yeah, regarding the comments from the video, the previous video, which was just a time lapse for 10 minutes, um, I was actually really amazed to see the amount of people who preferred it. There were quite a few comments saying I prefer this over the normal length video, just condensing all my recording down into 10 minutes. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm sure it was probably a minority. I'm sure if I was to run a vote, most people would say we definitely want commentary. Uh, yeah, so don't worry, I'm not going to just start doing time lapse videos. I will always be doing commentary. But I don't know, maybe, if, I don't know, would you want both? I guess my internet wouldn't cope with recording, oh sorry, uploading twice. So turning it into a time lapse video as well. Um, yeah, the idea is interesting. I can see the benefits of it though, like if you're really busy, maybe sitting through a 40 minute or 30 or 40 minute video isn't really uh, manageable because yeah it does take up some time so I don't know I think probably just hear some opinions in the comments section do you want me to just do my videos as I've always been doing them uh, or would you prefer if I did my normal videos and then uploaded the same video in time-lapse format Definitely no guarantees about it though, because I don't know if I would have the time. I'm super busy as well with other projects. But the idea is interesting. Anyway, as you can see, we're putting poplars in, uh, which we were doing yesterday, but this time in real time, so you can really appreciate it more. I was saying in the previous video how impressed I was that I was actually managing to keep the same curve I was consistently keeping the same cornering, as you can see there, we've got a slight corner up here, a little twist and a turn. Yeah, I didn't think I'd be able to do that, but it's actually not too difficult if you've got a steering wheel. I think we're going to have to go into the cultivated area just up here, because the poplar are actually following the field shape rather than the cultivated shape. I've just literally gone down there in a straight line but the field is a bit wavy. And there they are. So yeah, enough to 
to do four, no, eight rows, eight rows from one crate. And they're being planted as densely as that. I was saying as well, um, well, I was saying quite a bit of stuff, I'm just trying to remember everything I said in that previous video. It's like a willow tree, if you were to cut off a fresh piece of growth and then just stick it in the ground, make sure it has water, it will just grow into a new tree. It's so easy to take a cutting of these type of trees. Willow and poplar, but well, I think willow even more so. They are incredible. Which I guess is why they're so good for biomass. Okay, so we reached the end on the first row. We've got this really nice track here. I think it's lovely, especially down the bottom end there where it turns into a gate. It's a very inviting look. You just want to go in there and explore. Anyway, yes, let me get this done. We'll get all of the uh, all of this crate put in. Looking good. In the end I did decide to not come back down the cultivated part. Probably best just to stick within this area. And yeah, it's actually going to be better because that is a well, straightish line that I've created with the cultivator. It does curve off a bit at the end. It's a bit wavy. But that really doesn't matter. Yeah, I'm actually really excited to do poplar bales, although we could do 50-50. We'd be quite expensive though, renting all the different equipment, because uh, the foragery is not going to be cheap. Although we do only have one poplar header, I think, and that is for the New Holland, so uh, it's not the most expensive one out there. If we did it with the forager, we'd get wood chips, and if we did it with the poplar baler, obviously we'd just get wrapped up bales of, of poplar, which would be sold as they are, I think, biomass. Okay, should I turn around again? I think I'm going to probably follow this line. We'll just stick on this line. Should be fine. Uh, I know it's a weird shape, but I don't think it's going to be uneconomical doing it this way. It's fine. After all, this field was free. We're about to run out. And I do need to switch on, I think it is. I need to switch on seasonal growth because that is now finished. Uh, so if I go into this one... Seasonal growth is paused and now it's switched on. So if I was to keep that off, they would now start growing through the winter and they might even be ready to harvest in the winter time, which is not really what we're looking for. Although, I would have always thought that you would harvest poplar in the winter because that is when it's lost its leaves. But then, what do I know? <laughs> uh, let's just take a look. Poplar. Oh, you can. You can harvest at any time of the year. Uh, but you can only plant up until... August. Yeah, that was what I found interesting because like when you plant a bare root tree, you would tend to do that sort of November to March and putting the poplars in, in this game, seems to be the complete opposite. So I'm not too sure why. Why it would be different. There must be a reason. Okay, right, so um, I think we are actually done here. I will have to do some fertilising and everything, but I think all of that can wait until next year, until the spring. And then, yes, once everything has been harvested, we can then do the lime and we can do the uh, the ploughing and stuff. But the poplar should regrow, so that is another really nice thing about it. Oh, and my quad bike. We'll have to get the quad bike at some point, but it should be fine in there for now. I, I guess is the issue. We'd have to walk back to get it if we're not tabbing. Now this planter is rented, so we'll have to return it straight away. We don't want to be paying more than we need to for rental, although it probably has just updated. It's probably just 
gone over an hour. That would be so typical. What's my dog doing there? I must have told it to follow me. Yeah, uh, let me just take a look here. Let's go onto the machinery page and then find... Yeah, it's on 1.2, so we've got no rush. We've already paid for another hour. Um, but yeah, that's good. We might have paid for the other hour in the previous episode anyway. So yeah, um, you can see what the wheat looks like. Really good fields of wheat. We now have the winter ahead of us. So if we can make enough money from various sources, it would be great to start the cow farm. Um, because that is sort of what I would have hoped to have done by now anyway. Episode 10 I think we're on, and we still haven't got any cows at all. So I'm a little bit disappointed about that. Luckily we do have quite a bit of barley to sell. I've been told that January is the best month to sell barley, but if the price is good today, we will sell it because we are desperate. So um, obviously it's nice to wait for the price to be at its absolute peak, but it's not always practical because we're not exactly rolling in money. Uh, I must point out that we do have a loan, but that is not actually a loan. That was a mistake by me as usual. There is our final pallet of poplar. Hopefully they can uh, keep hold of that for us. We'll eventually take it back to the farm. Okay, right, so there should be a trigger here. Return, and let's just see here. Ooh, look at all that stuff. That would be pretty amazing, if only we had the money. But that actually is what I'm sort of looking for. We need, on this map, we need some really small tractors and some huge tractors, because there's such a range. There's a massive range of uh, different fields. Yeah, so anyway. Yes, we have a £10,000 loan. I'm pretty sure that wasn't in a video. Um, I don't think that was intentional. That looks pretty. Our poplar. So yeah, although in real life, I say in real life, when we stood there, I mean, um, it looks really wavy. You can see really, it's pretty straight. Just because the field has this, uh, well, the field isn't rectangular. It's kind of tapered at this end. So um, yeah, I don't think we have anything to bring back, do we? I won't rush off just yet. We have 45,000 litres of barley left. The price has increased. This is looking quite good. Yes, and you weren't wrong, whoever you were. Thank you for your comment. Um, for the uh, information about January being a good month. Looking very promising. So, um, I think... The plan is going to be to sell some barley today uh, and then try and keep hold of as much as possible for January. Yeah, this is the issue. I always flick through my comments and I read them, but I I can't remember who left each comment. And it makes me feel pretty bad. So if you were the person who said January is the best month, please do post it again. I'll try and spot it. But uh, yeah, I, I can't guarantee it because I get quite a few comments, which are all very much appreciated. But sadly, uh, because I spend uh, like three hours recording and editing these videos, I then spend the rest of my day, apart from when I'm just taking a bit of free time, working on my other projects like Machinery Restorer. So I don't just sit there for hours on end just reading comments as much as I'd love to. I just, I just don't have the time. So. Um, I, I, I read as many as I can. I don't just ignore you. I do look whenever I have a minute. Now I think, where did I leave my trailer? I think I left the trailer up here, but I might be wrong. Here's the other wheat field, looking brilliant. Looking very good. Yes, I did, I left it up here. It's where the quad bite was. And I guess with it being November now, it would be a wise idea to put the combine under cover. So will the combine fit in there? Mm, looks like it should do. Just back it straight in. Keep it as dry as possible. Or 
almost. That should do it. Don't want to bend the auger. <laughs> that would be bad. Uh, so yes, there is my trailer. Again, the trailer will be upgraded at some point because it's not big enough. But I'm just making do because we do need to get the cows. Thing is though, I think to begin with, the cows will just be living on hay. We definitely can't afford to get a feed mixer or anything like that. But it's a start and I think hay actually is about 80% of the requirement. Wait a second. Yes, the pipe is over here. I was heading around the front, but that's where you tip it. Yeah, I, I believe it's 80% effectiveness, which is pretty good. The best place has probably changed since last time. Uh, so we've got 66. Yeah, that seems to be the best one. Farm store bay 1. We'll just tag that. Is that over here? It is. So they're consistently offering the best prices, but I think they're going to be overtaken. Because they are now decreasing, and others are increasing. And we do have loads and loads of grass fields, which have at the moment been overlooked, just because we've been super busy with the arable fields. Um, I don't think I need quite so much grass, so I might plough one of them up. Maybe even the one which we most recently mowed. I know the others are for sheep and for pigs and stuff. I don't know, I'm not going to rush into anything because I just don't know. I need to take the JCB back to the yard as well because that's still here from when we were doing the drilling. The nice thing is we already own the cow farm, so it's not like we have to buy the placeable because those things are super expensive. I think one of them is seven hundred and something thousand pounds, which is quite amazing. But then I think it was a very sophisticated shed. It had all the automatic robots in there, as opposed to manual robots. <laughs> no, yeah, it had the robots in there. Um, right, so here we are. See if we can get by with just this, because like I said, I really don't want to be selling more than necessary, because we're just losing out on potential money, with the price increasing. Should be able to get by with that, I hope. So, I just have to establish a few things. Basically, um, are we paying for transportation? I think we are. Just tab over here. Oh, it is actually a really good one. It's a nice shed. Uh, yeah, so we can afford quite a few cows, but I think, it's not going to tell me yet, but I think we do have to give them, let's just see, does it have, a, yeah, it might have its own automatic water fill point, which is good. So maybe they only need food. The water might be automatic. Until we own them, I'm not going to see. So, yeah, that's looking good. That is looking very good. So, I think the best thing to do then is just to stand here and buy some cows. We're going to buy them young because we're, we're only feeding them hay. There is no point in buying expensive cows for them not to be fully productive. We might as well buy them young, allow them to grow up because uh, they won't be making us any money young anyway. The Angus one is best for profit and can be sold. Okay. Is that Holstein? Uh, that's best for dairy. Okay, so we are aiming for dairy, really. Uh, so that's a good one to go for. The brown Swiss. That's good for milk as well. And limousine, is it? Um, that's best to be bred uh, and sold. So basically Holstein and brown Swiss. Those are the ones we we're aiming for. So I think we'll just get a nice mixture. The capacity of this barn is 150, so that's pretty good going. Um, I don't want to get more than I can handle, so I think probably 25 of those. Let's see here. 25 of those. That's 50 cows. That's pretty good. Yeah, that's not bad at all. So there they are, in the field. Very happy cows. 
So, yeah, they do not need water. It's all automatic. That's fantastic. Hay is indeed 80% effectiveness, which I think is good. That is good. Uh, we will also need to have straw, uh, but that'd be for bedding and stuff. Slurry will be produced anyway, and there won't be any milk production yet. I don't think. So, get back to that Massey Ferguson tractor. And then we can jump into the JCB. We can bring some bales across. And it looks like we have got away with not selling any more. I don't think we need to. But in January, we will do. I'm now going to keep this trailer in here. I think it's a more sensible place. It frees up some barn space on the inside of the yard. And this trailer is obviously going to be used here, so... That's good. Oh, no, I'm pretending I've got manual attach. There is actually the manual attach mod out. I don't know if I should use it for this series. I was saving it for more of a survival type series. It's a good mod though. Very good mod. We will use it at some point. Let's pop this tractor in the shed. That is all of my lime that I emptied out of the spreader because we returned it in the previous episode. And we will be spraying as well, that's how we're going to fertilise, but I might change because I think it's quite slow. Okay, uh, so JCB, here it is. We currently have the pallet fork on. I think we do have, let me think, uh, I think we've got a bell spike in the shed anyway. I'm going to have to go back where we came from. I'm pretty sure I left it in the shed. What a difference it makes having cows in the field. It just brings the place to life. So there's our straw. We will have to pay for a straw shredder though. A bale shredder. Okay, I thought I left it in here, but then again, I guess I didn't. It must be over here. Or it could be over there. It could be anywhere. Yeah, it's up here where I've just been. I'm not in convinced that is my dog. It seems to be everywhere but in my own garden. Well, we haven't named him or her, so... He's, he's everyone's. He visits everybody. Here we are. Yeah, I, I need to keep my implements together, really. All the front loader attachments or telehandler attachments, they'll all be in the same shed. Otherwise, it's going to get kind of confusing. I think further down the line when we do have the total mix ration I will buy some older cows so we can immediately start to uh, produce milk but for now yeah it's not worth it there's not really much point in owning cows that have the potential to be 100% productive but then you can only actually make them 80% well, I'm guessing it's 80% productive I'm sure that's what the effectiveness means doesn't it must be. Right, so let's just get this one off the top. I can use my crab steering to get it back on top. And I think I'm going to pick three up. We may not need three. Okay, so there's a chance that these will go flying. Hopefully not. There we go. Looking promising. Thankfully, we're not going far. Probably should have uh, crabbed the other way. But yeah, what I need to do is get a tractor attached to the trailer, bring the trailer out, and then we can stack these properly.
Here we are. Enjoy. Don't know exactly where the trigger's going to be. Or if we have to use a, a mixer. No, I don't think we do. Just takes a bit of time to take it. Oh, wow, it looks like it takes quite a bit. In that case, we might be giving them nearly everything. Okay, um, so probably enough space there for about eight. It's quite amazing. But we might as well give them eight, because otherwise we're just going to be constantly checking to see if they have enough food. So yeah, I'm going to get the fen tractor, we'll bring it out. It's just going to make it so much easier. Here we go. It will also free up the trailer. It's probably not the best place for the hay bales. I think I'm going to keep all my straw bales in here. And also some machinery. Well, some implements, not, not tractors. Uh, I'm going to keep the tractors in the same yard. Just makes it easier. Uh, I think I'm going to keep all of the hay bales in the shed across the road. Oh, yeah. Remember to strap them again. I don't even need to use the JCB, we could just drive into the trigger with this, but I think that might be a bit awkward. Okay. I think about seven or eight will fill it. It's these top ones more than any that need to be removed. the cows have all made it to here. Now that's nice, that is realistic. Pretty sure there were no cows here at all before I brought some food in. And they've all come rushing to it. Okay, try and snatch that one off the top. There we go. At this rate, we'll be needing all the bales. All the cows are eating it. So, um, yeah, it's already uh, 20 to 2. Probably no bad thing, though, because we don't really have that much to do in November. Next month is December. We're back at just one day per month at the moment. Yeah, I put these on in the opposite direction, but this might work. see how that how good that is let's just see if that's going to be enough close look at that 56,000 liters one more should do it uh, so I think yeah I'll just take the one that flips and then the rest can go into the shed There you go, cows. Looks like I've probably turned them away. They've all disappeared. Right, so that is 60,000 litres. Uh, so, uh, nothing else to do. Well, straw. We will do straw in the future. Uh, but we need to get the bell shredder first of all. So, I'm just going to tie the place up a bit. I'll just open this door. I think this side is going to be the best. We can keep the other side free for things like silage bales. Yeah. In fact, we might even be able to get everything in one shed. Have silage on one side and hay on the other.
and we're left with one bale. So I think the best thing for this bale is just to go and put it in the same place as the other one, which is already being fed to the cows. Just try and persuade it forwards a bit. And we now have an available trailer to use. Fantastic. Not that we're going to be making any more bales this year, but soon. Yes, I can feel it now. The next year is going to be so busy. We've been making silage from the grass. We're going to be making hay bales. I don't think we're going to make any grass bales. Um, unless we had sheep. Otherwise, there's not much point in making them. Hopefully poplar bales. And then we have lots of wheat, straw bales. Um, and, yeah, possibly potatoes and sugar beet or something like that. Right, okay, I'm going to put this JCB in here. That looks fairly neat. I think if I just give it a good push. There we go. Just close the gap. At least try and close the gap. It seems I'm not strong enough. Oh, there we go. <laughs> uh, right. So, yep, that's good. Hay bales and then probably silage bales at this end next year. Look forward to it. Right. Uh, yeah, so if I just close this door good place to keep the JCB but that is the only machine that's staying here as I said about five episodes ago the trailer we will keep over here and then the fence can head back to the other farm We'll just move it when we need to get some straw. Right, so what else do we need to do today? I think we actually the progress has been pretty good. We've, we've done the poplar, we've cultivated the field, we have got some cows, which is the important thing. Really happy about that. And fed them and automatically given water. Uh, they're all back here eating hay again. Slurry will be produced, which is good. Then we can start to spread slurry on the fields. We have £17,000 and we have more to come in the next few days. So, yeah, what do you think we should do in the next episode? I just don't know what to do next. We could get some sheep. We do have the hay for sheep. But in the summertime they have to be given grass because it's just so much easier. Could even get horses, actually. We could get a horse or two. Would be more expensive. And then there's pigs. We're going to be getting pigs, but I'm not ready for them yet. But yeah, one day. So I think this is going to conclude this episode. I just love that view. That is so nice. Yeah, so, yeah, again, please do post opinions down below. I would love to hear from you. Suggestions for the next episode, which will be on Wednesday. And, um, yeah, any other suggestions are always greatly appreciated. Thanks for watching, everybody. Hope you enjoyed it, and until next time, see you again soon. Bye for now.